with a franchise as big as Resident Evil, obviously this series has its fair share of iconic boss fights. However, this is a horror franchise that we're talking about, so clearly we are going to have some extremely disturbing and disgusting monsters waiting for us in each entry. From a giant fucking fetus to a smorgasbord of body parts, there are truly some disgusting bosses within the Resident Evil series. So in today's episode, I'm diving back into the series as I locate the most disgusting, disturbing, and most revolting bosses of the franchise. For the record, we're only focusing on the boss fights of each game, but expect a separate list for the regular enemies of the series sometime in the near future. Anyway, my name is Ruben with Nerd Space Games, and this is my top 10 most disgusting bosses of Resident Evil. Let's get it. Number 10, Queen Leech, Resident Evil Zero. We'll see which one of us is gonna die. <laughs> 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 Giant insect and reptile monsters in Resident Evil are kind of a staple of the franchise. Though, hearing that one of the boss fights is a giant leech on its own probably doesn't exactly scream disgusting. However, it's the transformation of this creature and its final forms that really help it stand out as one of the more disturbing creatures of the series. In Resident Evil Zero, it's revealed that the corpse of James Marcus infused with the T-Virus infected Queen Leech. After some time, the Queen Leech and James Marcus became one. So in the final confrontation with James Marcus after his big bad guy speech, James begins to change into the Queen Leech herself. And how does he do it? He vomits. He vomits up a bunch of leeches before transforming into a humanoid leech monster in all of its slimy goodness, of course. Yep, that sounds about right. Sure, the Queen Leech doesn't compare to any other boss on this list in terms of how disgusting it is, but James Marcus's transformation into it and the slimy texture of the beast itself are enough to earn it a spot at the bottom of today's list. Hey, Queenie! Feast on this! Number 9, Alex Wesker, Resident Evil, Revelations 2. Arguably one of the most brutal and terrifying transformations for a boss, Alex Wesker becomes an abomination after attempting to kill herself during the ending of Claire's story. However, she fails and instead mutates into a deformed shell of her former self that is obsessed with living. It doesn't stop there though. After being confronted by Barry Burton, Alex injects herself with the Ouroboros virus and she becomes something much worse. Her body rips apart as her spine becomes exposed and the only part holding her two halves together. In this form, she begins to crawl around the ceilings and shoot toxic gas at both Barry and Natalia. Alex Wesker may be the weaker Wesker villain, but she definitely outshines him in the disgusting and disturbing department, that's for sure. Number 8, Skagdead, Resident Evil Revelations. I don't know what's more disturbing about the Skagdead, the way it looks, the way it sounds, or the abilities that it has. Regardless of which part of the Skagdead disturbs you the most, there is one thing that I'm sure we could all agree on here. It's absolutely disgusting. Firstly, the comms officer aka the first Skagdead boss fight has a distorted voice as he continues to repeat the same phrase over and over again. But after letting him lose, we come face to face with one of the most disgusting bosses of the franchise. The head of the monster reminds me of a Venus flytrap, and its left arm is essentially a chainsaw that can instantly kill you. However, the most disturbing feature on the Skagdead is the human body that's attached to the side of the monster. This human feature looks to be in pain as the facial expression says it all. Actually, the human attached to the Skagdead kind of reminds me of something straight out of John Carpenter's The Thing. Number 7, Nyx, Resident Evil Outbreak. The 
Outbreak Files 1 and 2 are two of the most underrated games of the RE franchise. Not only are these games the best multiplayer experience of the series in my opinion, but they also feature some incredible boss fights. And some of those bosses are disgusting as fuck. Take Nyx for example. The final form of this creature looks somewhat similar to the Skagdead, but more disgusting and disturbing in both the way it looks and its abilities. Basically, this B.O.W. is essentially one giant blob that moves around Raccoon City and absorbs any creature it can get its hands on. One of its arms is made up of a bunch of dead soldiers, and it has three legs, one of which looks to be the leg of an elephant, I think? However, probably the most recognizable trait on the Nyx is the super tyrant attached to its fucking side. Jesus, and I thought the random guy growing out of the side of the Skagdead was bad. Oh, but it gets much worse, my friends. Because of the Nyx's abilities, it can absorb the players as well. If you're close enough, the Nyx will try to smash its corpse-filled arm down onto the player, and if it makes contact, it'll absorb that player. While technically this isn't an insta-kill attack, it does appear to trap the player for the rest of the fight while slowly raising the infection rate until the player dies from the infection. Basically, the only way the player can be saved is for the Nyx to be killed before the infection rate reaches 100%. Number 6, Baby Monster, Resident Evil Village. <laughs> Resident Evil Village may be an RE game that I don't love as much as other entries due to the game focusing more on action versus horror. However, there are certain moments in this game that revisit some of the traditional horror and disturbing atmospheres seen in earlier entries. For example, while exploring the basement section of House Benevito, Ethan will come face to face with his biggest fear, a giant fetus. The high-pitched scream of this monster is enough to make you uneasy, but if you manage to get a quick look at it, then all bets are really off at that point. Seeing a giant fetus slowly crawl across the floor towards you as it leaves a trail of blood and it screeches as it gets closer to you is an image that will never leave you. And get this, it's not even the most disgusting boss of the game either. Oh, and yeah, I'm counting this as a boss, so sue me. Number 5, G Offspring, Resident Evil Outbreak and Resident Evil 2. a giant baby monster was disgusting then I would look away now because it's not even the most disgusting baby on this list technically. Allow me to introduce you to the offspring of G Birkin himself, G. Yep, just G. Technically G offspring actually appears in multiple different forms in multiple different games including Resident Evil 2, RE2 Remake, and Resident Evil Outbreak. However, we're going to remove the remake version of it since they are regular enemies in that game. So for today's list we're focusing on the Outbreak and original RE2 version of G. Basically, these little demons are created by G. Birkin by impregnating human hosts with the G larva. If the host is not compatible with G, then they'll be ripped apart from the inside out and these offspring creatures will be created instead. In Resident Evil 2, we face off against one that has become an adult in a boss fight as either Leon or Claire depending on the scenario. The adult G can create more G babies and send them to attack the player. However, it's a transformation of the G adult and outbreak that really helps elevate the monster so high on this list. Just look at this transformation. Enough said. Number 4, La Batisa, Resident Evil 6. <laughs> Believe it or not, Resident Evil 6 didn't exactly fail in every single department. Actually, one of the more impressive feats by RE6 was the amount of new and disturbing enemies, both bosses and regular enemies. But there's one boss in that game that stands out as one of the most disgusting monsters of the franchise, the Batisa. Appearing twice in Leon's campaign, this creature is physically the most disgusting looking creature of the game. 
which is kind of hilarious since the translation for La Batisa is beauty. Covered in what looks like a bunch of nipples, La Batisa has spores scattered around its entire body that shoots out a poisonous gas. This gas will infect nearby humans, causing them to become zombies. It also has other strange attacks, like using its long tongue to melee you if you get too close to it. Between the look of it and its weird animation when it shoots out the poisonous gas, La Batisa is easily the most disgusting monster of Resident Evil 6 and one of the most disturbing bosses of the entire franchise. Number 3. Salvatore Maru, Resident Evil Village Ew. The exit's underwater. You're done! I don't have time for this. Miranda sent you to slow me down? You're pathetic. If you thought the giant fetus in Resident Evil Village was the most disgusting boss of the game, then you probably forgot about Maru. Sure, the giant baby monster is utterly terrifying, but it is just a giant fetus covered in blood. Maru, on the other hand, I honestly have no idea what the fuck he's supposed to be. Even in his normal form, Maru is still the most disgusting creature of the game. But as always, it gets worse. Actually, in the fight against us, Maru transforms into a giant amphibian monster full of warts, spores, and whatever the fuck else is on him. He can even make it rain acid and quickly make his slimy ass over to Ethan despite the battlefield being massive, which basically means there's no getting away from this nasty ass monster. Great. Number 2, G. Birkin, Resident Evil 2. We talked about the G offspring earlier, so obviously we had to include G Birkin on this list as well. Taking a look at the man responsible for creating those disgusting offspring of his, we come to learn that the apple really doesn't fall far from the tree. Actually, G Birkin is more disgusting than his little babies in just about every single way. For one, his transformations. While the offspring really just has two forms, infant and adult G, Birkin on the other hand has multiple transformations, each one becoming more disgusting than the one that came before it. Seeing Birkin slowly lose his humanity in both the physical and mental state of his being was one of the most disturbing elements of both versions of Resident Evil 2, and it ultimately led to the most disturbing version of Birkin, Final Stage Birkin. As Leon or Claire are investigating the back of the train, a giant blob-like version of Birkin appears. It's essentially a massive chunk of flesh, but with razor-sharp teeth and a giant gooey eyeball. But the way Birkin looks in each of his transformations is not the only thing that makes him one of the most disgusting bosses of the franchise. It's what his motivations are. See, as G. Birkin, the monster's main goal is to reproduce. To do this, G. Birkin needs to find a compatible host and impregnate them by forcing G. Larva down their throat. Because William Birkin was obviously compatible with G, this means that his daughter is too. So, most of the game, we see Birkin chasing down Cherry in order to impregnate his own daughter with the G. Larva, which, spoiler, he actually does succeed in doing. Yeah, it kind of makes you wonder how a monster as disgusting and as disturbing as this doesn't claim the number one spot, doesn't it? Well, let me show you why, and yeah, you're definitely going to regret asking that question. Number one, Marguerite Baker, Resident Evil 7. Oh, now with me, we're going to settle this! Ah! Every time I think about RE7, I think about the boss fight against Marguerite. Honestly, she's a big reason why I don't replay the game more than I have. Everything about Marguerite skeeves me the hell out. Even her traditional form before the boss fight against her, Marguerite comes off as terrifying thanks to her connection with bugs. Her facial expressions are extremely disturbing and there's an argument that could be made that Marguerite is actually more terrifying than Jack Baker is. But it's right before the final fight against her that things get extremely disturbing. First, Marguerite's limbs stretch out, making her resemble a human spider. This unproportional look for her is absolutely unnerving and disturbing on its own, but again, it doesn't stop there. During the fight, we experience exactly why she's the most disgusting boss of the franchise. On top of her look, Marguerite has an ability and a weak spot that will completely blow your mind. 
See, she can hatch bugs and send them after Ethan during this fight. How does she do this? With her womb. Yep, there's a weird nest situated in a very delicate spot on her. Charming, huh? Well, guess where her weak spot also is? So to recap, you have this spider-like woman crawling around this dark building, hatching bugs straight from in between her legs, and all the while you need to try to defeat her by shooting this weak spot where all the bugs are coming from. Need I say more? Stay the fuck out! That's it for this episode of Nerdspace Games. Hit up the comments and let me know what you think of my list. Is Marguerite Baker the most disgusting and disturbing boss of the entire series, or is there someone else that deserves that title? Let me know down below. Anyway, if you haven't already, be sure to subscribe to my channel for more survival horror content. Also, leave a like on today's video if you enjoyed today's topic. But thanks for watching, and as always, I'll catch you guys on the next episode of Nerdspace Games. Take care.